actually going to be the first time that they're lining up against each other in a real game since they were little kids. It's going to be weird, they both said. I'm going to tell them ball out, Wallace told me, but then I'm going to try to kill them. That's some of the trash talk that I was telling you about. But check this out, Mike. When the Dolphins arrived here last night in New Orleans, Wallace went to hang out with Lewis and his family. I'm not sure if the coaches were cool with that, but Wallace said, hey, that's my brother. Nobody can tell me not to talk to him. Mike. Yeah, Lisa, they say they talk five times a week, but they cut it back to three. This week, there is Keenan Lewis's family. They're here. The Wallace family here as well as Mike has had to procure some 35 tickets in this sold-out Superdome tonight. Toss one by Miami. They deferred, giving the Saints the ball. First of Darren Sproles goes back deep to receive. 3-0 and 3-0, and, and, and off we go from the Dome in New Orleans. With hang time, Sproles will bring it out from a half dozen deep. And won't get to the 20-yard line. Tackled by Jimmy Wilson. It brings in the record-setting quarterback, Drew Brees. You'll see a lot of Pierre Thomas and Darren Sproles, who has such a key role in this offense. John, there's no Lance Moore. He's hurt, so Kenny Stills, a rookie, in the starting lineup tonight. And so is Jari Evans, the right guard, 73. That's big for Drew Brees. Yeah, Evans has to play better. He's had two holding calls already this season. Matter of fact, his whole offensive line of the Saints has to play better, especially against his crowd from Miami. Evans out last week with a hamstring injury, and that pressure right in the face of the six-footer Breeze impacted him. Opening drive from the 18. Pierre Thomas left. And he gets the corner. He gets two yards as Nolan Carroll, the starting corner, in on the tackle. Carroll is starting because Dimitri Patterson has missed the last couple of games. So Nolan Carroll remains in the starting lineup along with the rest of this group. John's a big loss not having Cameron Wake, their best pass rusher for Miami here tonight. Yes, but you'll see Derek Shelby, second-year man from Utah, in rundowns. And their first-round draft choice, Deion Jordan out of Oregon, is ready to go in passing situations. Breeze adjusting the play in an empty backfield for second and seven. And the first pass attempt of the night by Breeze. Sproles is open. Safety with the angle. Takes Sproles out. But a huge game for Darren Sproles down to the 31. I've seen a lot of flatten ups run by backs, but nobody runs it as quickly as Darren Sproles. Jones jumped in the flat. Look at Sproles. Look for the ball into the flat. He takes it up and fooled Rashad Jones big time. And Darren Sproles, one of the great all-purpose backs, makes another big play. But what play selection? They had a beat on Jones. They saw something in their game plan, and, and they attacked their best safety early. 29 of those yards after the catch. Reason the Saints in Dolphin territory at the 31. Wing it to Sproles. To the 27-yard line. So this is Kevin Coyle's task tonight. Rain in Sproles and Jimmy Graham and keep this Breeze offense in check. Kevin Coyle's the defensive coordinator, John. Background with the Cincinnati group for the last couple of years. And Mike Zimmer, their fine coordinator. I asked him, what are the keys to stopping Drew Breeze? And he said, how long do you have? He's got his hands <laughs> full tonight with this balanced New Orleans Saints offense. They'll use all five eligibles, and Breeze won't discriminate who he throws the ball to. Here's the rookie undrafted free agent Kyrie Robinson in the game early. They really like the way he's run the ball, and he gets it for about four yards there. Robinson's out of West Texas a and He almost didn't make the invitees to camp, let alone the roster, as they were trying to formulate this Saints team. He did, was just terrific every time he touched the ball in preseason. And Johnny, when they closed the game out against Arizona last week, his four carries opened Sean Payton's eyes, and now he's in the first 15 plays. Yeah, Chris Ivory went to the Jets. Ingram is out, and Robinson has taken full advantage of his opportunities. They like him here. Third and two. Miami brings pressure up the middle. Into the vacated area goes Kenny Stills. First and goal, Saints to the four. One of the best things that Pierre Thomas does for the New Orleans Saints is pick up blitzes. That time they jam the front. You're going to see a blitz come right up the middle. And Pierre Thomas says, stay away from my quarterback. 
flush pickup, and Kenny Stills, the former Oklahoma Sooner, continues to impress the New Orleans Saints. Creative slot combinations where two receivers are in there tight together, and Sean Payton has a lot of different looks. Sproles the back on first and goal, and there's Darren Sproles, opening drive, touchdown, New Orleans. Well, Sean Payton said he's a little rusty, calling plays in the red zone, they were struggling, but that drive was vintage Sean Payton. They present a passing set illusion, you're going to see Danell Ellerby drop like it's a pass, and they just hand the ball off to Sproles on a draw play, there's nobody there. They completely fooled the Miami Dolphins from the opening play of that possession. And they did it with Sproles, a rookie running back and a rookie wide receiver. How does Sean Payton continue to find these players? Extra point added by Garrett Hartley. So you win the toss, you defer the option. That means you put Breeze in the Saints offense on the field first in the dome. And they say thank you very much. Six plays, 82 yeah. yards, and a Sproles touchdown. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Toyota Care, caring for you and your car. Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. NFL Mobile, learn more about the 60-minute free trial at NFL.com slash mobile. And Autotrader.com, now compare new and used cars and find the best deal on Autotrader.com. Greater New Orleans Bridge gives you a great view over the Mississippi to the Central Business District. And you arrive here at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. These guys have done a lot of this. The way we draw it up. First time we've seen Sean Payton back on national TV since that suspension and away from football for a year. And uh, he talked. And we'll get into it later about the joys of being back and what he missed. But Drew Brees and Payton, what a great combination. Short kick to Marcus Thickpen has a return opportunity. And they won't get past the 15-yard line. The man who carried earlier in the drive, Kyrie Robinson, comes up with the stick. So out of a 7-0 hole for his 20th NFL start, here comes Ryan Tannehill, 25 years old, first rounder out of Texas A&M. They'll rotate backs with Lamar Miller and Daniel Thomas. A lot of three receivers. And the players up front. The strength is in the middle with Incognito. Mike Pouncey, outstanding center, and John Jerry, the guards. From the 17, Tannehill to throw on first down. It's caught by Mike Wallace. Welcome back home. The New Orleans native right near a first down. First play of the game, Kenny Vaccaro. First round draft choice from Texas on a blitz. You're going to see him come right off the edge. He's fooled by the play action fake in the backfield. And there is Keenan Lewis making a nice wrap tackle. Good start for Miami. Those are the two guys who have been best friends since Pee Wee football, age six. Against each other on Monday Night Football. Inside the run, Lamar Miller tries to turn the corner. Only a couple of yards for the second year running back. He's a cane out of Miami. So Rob Ryan is the defensive coordinator. He's taken over this year. And you see the folks they have up front. John Jenkins is on the nose. Broderick Bunkley is out for this game. Jonathan Vilma is not there in the middle of the defense. Curtis Lofton is. You've mentioned Vaccaro once already. Seen him play five positions. Incredible versatility. Only a rookie. Gain of four. It's another carry for Miller in the open field. Near midfield with a first down. But Lamar Miller and this Dolphin team needs to find some run game, John. Good blocking off that left side. I think you're going to have to run the football against this five defensive back system that the New Orleans Saints have been running. I like the start of this game for Jonathan Martin. Second year left tackle blocking Cameron Jordan. Paving away for Lamar Miller. Tannehill Hill out of his hands quick. It's Charles Clay, the tight end, with the catch on the 45-yard line. Clay has become a very important player on this team because of the injury to Dustin Keller 
earlier in the season. John Clay has to do a lot and is pretty good at it. He is really good, Mike. I've seen him play fullback, tight end, wide receiver. He's caught 14 passes. He's even rushed for a touchdown. He is Mr. Versatility in this Dolphin offense. This is second and five, and Tannehill with the keep, and with speed, Brian Tannehill into the red zone. Is that what you were talking about? I had a feeling I was going to see this on read, Mike. <laughs> this kid can run. An outstanding wide receiver at Texas A&M, and offensive coordinator Mike Sherman ran this at Texas A&M. They're going to read the defensive end. Junior Gallette never saw that coming. That'll get your Miami Dolphin running game going. How about that hole right there? 26 yards. Bob Greasy calls these games on radio in Miami. Dan Marino's watching. How about that? Miami quarterbacks picking up 26 on the run. <laughs> and Tannehill forced to take a timeout. Brian Tannehill of Miami trying to answer the opening drive score by the Saints. Well, the getting to know you part of coming into the NFL was fast forwarded significantly for Ryan Tannehill because he played for Mike Sherman when Mike was the head coach at Texas A&M, had Tannehill first as a receiver, then as a quarterback, and John it has uh, really shortened up the learning span and allowed them to do a lot with a second year quarterback. This is no average coach. He's one of the best, I think, Mike, and when you can mix the West Coast offense with the zone read and the no huddle, you are very, very difficult to defend, especially with a sharp athletic quarterback like Tanny Hill. Tanny Hill had some long runs in December of last year, 31, 30, and 20 yards. And had that 26-yarder to get him into the red zone. From the 18 out of the pistol, it is Miller to the right. And a gain of about eight yards over the tackles made by Raphael Bush. This is dominance by this Dolphin offensive line. They are taking control of the line of scrimmage, and Lamar Miller hasn't been touched until he gets through the linebacker level of the Saints. John, you see these numbers. It is early, but there are seven touchdowns on eight trips into the red zone, leading the NFL thus far. And the 10, right back to Miller. He pushes forward, trying to get the first down. Tyron Walker. Second year out of Tulsa makes the tackle very close to the first down as they spot it Miller was taken in the fourth round You know John Reggie Bush led this team in running he's on to Detroit and doing great things But Lamar Miller and Daniel Thomas are now getting the chances to become the main back They took Thomas in the second round in 2011 and then took Miller in the fourth round last year and now They've got to find a way to get a feature back and Joe Philbin's offense gonna get a measurement here for the first down if you get a look at Rob Ryan, you see the Alzheimer's Foundation of America and the name Joni on his play card there. Ruvinovich, oh, oh. the referee, shows it is that close to the first down. Rob has always put messages on his play card over the years, and this one, the most heartfelt, his dad, Buddy Ryan, and uh, his stepmom, Joni, Buddy's wife, passing away after a long battle with Alzheimer's. And uh, our thoughts to Rob, Rex, Buddy Ryan, the entire Ryan family for their loss. And Rob showing that his thoughts are with his dad and his late stepmom here this evening. Alert for the quarterback sneak. This is where Ryan Tannehill likes to take the game into his own hands and run behind Mike Pouncey, one of the best centers in pro football. Tyler Clutz is the fullback in for the Dolphins. Leading the way, and Daniel Thomas won't get there. So they bring Thomas in and John Jenkins Third round pick out of Georgia. Hunter Didn't like down. that. Did not like that call at all. You're going to see penetration from nose tackle John Jenkins. Inches. Third and inches. And you run the play to the outside on a zone blocking play. And penetration will kill you. Disappointing. Miami had a great drive. And short yardage is an area where this defense of New Orleans is much improved.
Get a great start for Caleb Sturgis. 29 yarder for the rookie. First flag of the night. The false start will bring it back five yards. Holder called for the false start there. I believe Bill Vinovich didn't have his mic on, but if I read his lips right, I thought he said number two. Why didn't you like that call? Because it was a zone blocking play to the outside? A lot of things have to be right. Mm -hmm. Certain defensive fronts are harder to block than others, and in an inch of situation, I'd have gone with Candy Hill. New goal now five yards back from 34. The rookie out of Florida bangs it through. Great momentum there. Stopped. Still a field goal as each team scores on its opening drive. To Atlanta for another AFC East against NFC South matchup. Next Monday night, Jets have something to prove. The rookie Geno Smith's got to clean up the turnover issues and Matt Ryan and the Falcons struggling off the rally, but lost to the Patriots. So we'll see you from Atlanta next Monday night, 825 Eastern. Jets and Falcons. Monday night games in New Orleans lead the world in cutaways. People know how to party. <laughs> and they get all fired up for their games. Sturgis kickoff. Will not be returned by Scrolls. A big issue for the Dolphin defense here tonight. Yeah, don't forget about Derek Scrolls. You know, he runs a flatten up. Colston clears it out, and they get a one on one with Rashad Jones. And obviously, Scrolls wins the first round. Then they run a simple draw play, and they run a pass pattern with it to confuse Miami, and no one touched Darren Scrolls. But we have the best third down back, arguably the best receiving tight end. And Marcus Colston, who's your all-time leading receiver, it's hard to cover all these Saints. Taking over from the 20. Breeze, perfect on the first drive. As that one rejected up front, Paul Soliai, who was a question mark to play tonight because of a knee injury, clogging up the middle. Soliai is an outstanding defensive tackle was an excellent nose tackle in a 34 defense one of the things you have to do against drew Brees is push the pocket and get hands up we all know Brees isn't the tallest quarterback he's had some balls batted down in his past that's a nice job by solii rejecting one early Five, nine, six, ready. Ready my scrolls comes around as the ghost the fake and on the gift to pierre thomas it's erased by Jared Odrick, who got the start tonight up front. You know, you have Randy Starks, you have Odrick and Soliai. Those are three great defensive tackles, and they must pick up the slack without Cameron Wake, their best pass rusher. Wake had 15 and a half sacks last year, and in these third and long situations, look for rookie Deion Jordan, the third pick in the draft, to be a factor rushing the passer against Charlie Brown. Third and 12, the Dolphins bring four. Breeze has time and incomplete. And he still slipped and fell. The pass was intended for Marcus Colston. But Danelle Ellaby in the defense force a three and out. That's more of what I expected from this Dolphin defense. They get a pass rejection from one defensive tackle, Solii. They get a tackle for loss from Jared Odrick. That allows Miami to do what they do best, and that's rush the passer. Good work. Marcus Thigpen, who... Brought both a punt and kickoff back in his first couple of years as a Dolphin. Set to take the Thomas Morstead punt. Who's the top two punters in gross average last year in the NFL. Guys who can boom it. And Morstead kicks it away from Thigpen. And we'll see where the mark comes. It'll be 49 yards of the punt. And the Dolphins will take over at their own 35. 621 left in the opening quarter. The first game in NFL history between teams that were unbeaten and untied at least three games into the season, and both are coming off a below 500 season the year before. The good starts by bad teams, both were poor teams, seven and nine last year. Lamar Miller back 
with Pouchy the center leading the way. Raphael Bush makes the tackle. You have a lot of names on that Saints defense, John, who we're calling, who we haven't called before. And look at all these people who they are missing here this season. Yeah, and it's forced Rob Ryan to use this hat trick defense. By that, I mean three safeties playing together. Look out there, you'll see 25, Raphael Bush, Malcolm Jenkins, 27. And the rookie, Kenny Vaccaro, 32. They're using three safeties at a time to compensate for all these missing in-action Saints. Some good players on the bench. Their screen is thrown, but it was blown up because the pressure's Cameron Jordan came busted in on Tannehill, the quarterback. It's a nice play by Junior Gallette, defensive end who's come a long way. They're bluffing a screen to the right side, and they're going to try to throw a throwback screen to the left. And watch Junior Gallette, the defensive end, read it and fall out and make it a difficult pass for Tannehill. That's good recognition by the young man, Junior Gallette. The Gallette, Jordan, Jenkins, Vaccaro, some of the new names on this Saints defense. Well, they do on third and seven. Check down is Miller. Reaching for that spot at the 45. And very close. You're obscured by the down mark, but it looks like he got it on that second effort away from the Curtis Lofton tackle. Boy, Lofton had a long way to go, Mike. Asking a lot of the ex Atlanta Falcon in coverage that time, and it's a nice effort by Lamar Miller diving for the first down. Take a look at it yourself. It's where the ball is when wow. your knee comes down. That was short of the mark. Sean Payton is looking to challenge and will. Again, once you are contacted by a player and Lofton makes the contact, it's where the ball is once the knee first comes down from Lamar Miller and it looked about a yard short. New Orleans is challenging the ruling on the field. The spot is short of the line of game. Time out. So, Bill Vinovich. The referee will look at this in replay, try to spot it. Is the knees down? Is that ball at the 45? We say no. Bill Vinovich, who was a replay official when he had a heart issue and was off the field as uh, one of the on-field referees for six years. Now he's back. Thankfully, that health condition has been cleared up. He's been cleared to return as a referee last year in this. So Vinovich is under the hood looking at these replays. There's no direct look down the 45-yard line, but again, that shin or knee, body part down there, and clear, even though it's not down the line, that he's not across the 45-yard line. So this one's easy. Even John have this one dialed in, right? That's fourth down. The question is, will Coach Philbin go for it? You, you would even think about it? I certainly would against Drew Brees in this offense. Really? Absolutely. It, it, we were both watching the game last night. Mike Smith chose to go for it. And those points would have changed how the game was played later on in the fourth quarter, Atlanta, New England. Well, exactly. You can be the devil's advocate there, Mike. But <laughs> when you play the New Orleans Saints and Drew Brees in this dome, history says they're going to score 30, 33 points tonight. So you would you coach differently against them? I, de I definitely really? would coach differently. And if you can't make six, six inches or a foot, you shouldn't be here anyway. But they, they didn't make six inches or a foot. <laughs> well, well, they had run that down play before. Either. Okay, okay. <laughs> There's other plays they have in that playbook, and Coach Philbin knows it. <laughs> Joe Philbin was a Green Bay assistant for nine years, the last five as the offensive coordinator. He was never a head coach at any level before becoming the Dolphins head coach last year. A steady, solid man. Here's the call. After reviewing the play, the runner was short of the 45-yard line. That means Sean Payton and the Saints can earn a third challenge. You know, John, now that the turnovers and scoring plays are automatically reviewed, the percentage for challenges that are successful by the coaches has gone up over half this year. 53% have been uh, the right call by the coaches. And they have decided to punt, but you better be ready later in this game for some trickery in the kicking game or go for it on fourth down. These Saints are hard to beat at home. You notice, I let you point out that they chose to punt in this case. Brandon Fields averaged over 50 last year. Moving it towards Sproles. 
Trying to kill it inside the five, but it's all the way home. 56 to kick, 36 of net. Well, Sean Payton is back. His games last year don't count on his career record because he was gone the whole year. So tonight, 100 regular season games. Here's the resume. Super Bowl champ, four times to the playoffs, three divisions, and a record of 31 games over 500. But these numbers, the offense, for a coach's first 100 games, more points and more yards than any coach, head coach before, under Sean Payton with Drew Brees here in New Orleans. It's a pretty special combination, John. You think about it, they both came kind of in parallel paths here together. We've long detailed how this franchise and city were struggling when they both arrived. And together they have made a legacy, to say the least. Soliai throws down Kyrie Robinson. That's the second time we've called the big defensive tackle out of Utah. They got to block Soliai. Odrick, Soliai, and Starks are a problem. Right now, Brian De La Puente, the center for the Saints, is having all kind of problems with Paul Soliai. And he's not the lone ranger that has a hard time blocking this big fella. He's been hurt, and are they glad he's back tonight? Second and 13, after the loss of three, Breeze checks it to Pierre Thomas. Tries to get away from Janelle Ellerby, but it was cleaned up by Jimmy Wilson. And that'll bring up third down. That's why Janelle Ellerby got a lot of money to come to Miami. He's up on the line of scrimmage. He's threatening the blitz. He falls out of there, and he sees this check down. And in the open field, he gives Pierre Thomas nothing after the catch. These are two excellent every-down linebackers. Danell Ellerby, the ex-Baltimore Raven, and Philip Wheeler, number 52, the ex-Oakland Raider. They brought a lot of speed to this defense. Last time Ellerby was in this building, got a ring, Super Bowl champion with the Ravens last year. Third and 12 for Bree. Caught for the first down at the 35-yard line. Nick Toon with the reception, his first the son of former Pro Bowler Al Toon. That's bad defense by Miami. It's a three-man rush. You have eight defenders in coverage. Obviously, Nolan Carroll is expecting help from Jimmy Wilson underneath. Inexcusable that you give up a long yardage conversion with a three-man rush. That was way too easy. Add to the list of fathers and sons who have both caught passes in the NFL. The Toons. Nick was on injured reserve. Got hurt in the preseason last year. That's his first NFL draft. Uh, first and ten, Breeze to Scrolls. Those first down gains of six or seven with Scrolls hurt you so much. How do you cover Darren Scrolls if you're Philip Weaver? They motion and shift into an empty set. Drew Brees sees Sproles one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. They give him a two-way go. He can break inside or outside. He's supremely quick. He's unbelievable in this system. And Drew Brees at the line of scrimmage is much like Peyton Manning. Watch him research his Dolphin defense. You know what they haven't done yet? Throw to Jimmy Graham. <laughs> Complete right at the first down sticks. And it will be a first down. It's caught by Kenny Stills and John for Sean Payton. This cast has changed since he was last year calling the plays because I mentioned Stills and Toon. There are some different people in this New Orleans offense. Don't forget, he broke his leg after week six in 2011. He turned the play call over to Pete Carmichael. Right. So then he missed all of 2012 with the suspension. So it's been over a year and a half since Sean Payton has called the plays. And you're right. There's a lot of new linemen, and there's a lot of new skill players. First and ten, looking back out to Sproles on the edge. Got about nine. Another good game to start a drive. And, John, you talk about play call. You call plays for years. It's certainly an art and a rhythm thing. It's taken Sean, admittedly, a while to get back into that rhythm, calling plays for Drew Brees. Yeah, and he told us last night, he says, if I want to start doing a better job, I'm going to give it back to Pete Carmichael. What a luxury the Saints have. Two great play callers, but I don't think there's anybody that has the guts 
as a play caller than Sean Payton has. Good to have a trigger like this, too. 8 of 10 is Breeze tonight. Back to the run, and there's nothing going on with the run. As again, Jared Audrick. John, that's a, the third running play that's been rejected for a loss of yardage. It's not good enough. This offensive line of the Saints has to run block better. This time it's Ben Grubbs at left guard getting beat badly by Audrick. They are throwing the interior of the, off, of the off, uh, offensive line of the Saints around, Mike. These defensive tackles are the Dolphins. Saints ran it five times in that first quarter for just seven yards. But what else is new? Breeze was sharp, 8 of 10 for 108. Against a good Miami defensive front here tonight. After one in the Dome, Saints 7, Dolphins 3 on Monday Night Football. It's like every Saints game, Drew Breeze is passing someone else uh, with his completions tonight, he has now passed John Elway fourth all-time history of the league. Passes completed. And with the yardage he had in the first quarter, over 100 yards, he has passed Fran Tarkington. So he is now sixth on the all-time pass list with a good chance to get up past Warren Moon. And behind Elway, Manning, Marino, and Favre. As this year goes on, if he stays healthy. And obviously the amount of passing in the game, what the Saints do with their passing offense, has changed the course of history, but it's still got every other team that can do what they're doing, and they're just doing it better than most right now. Second quarter begins with third and four. And Brees feeling the pressure, and he is sacked for the 11th time this year. What a quarter and a play for Jared Odrick. Nice dance, fourth down. These Dolphins are a handful. They can rush from the inside. They have speed coming from the outside. This time it's Odrick against Jari Evans. You see Sproul, or excuse me, Pierre Thomas pick up the blitz, but right now in one-on-one -on -one situations, Miami is licking the man in front of them. They're doing an excellent job rushing the passer and defending the run. That's a four-time all-pro Evans back from injury. But man, big rush on Morstead. Able to get away a rocket shot with hang time and out of bounds inside the 10. Thomas Morstead, outstanding punter. And pins the Dolphins back inside their 10 yard line. John, you mentioned at the open as Breeze sits and Tannehill gets back on the field. Miami's been long searching, searching for somebody to just get that mantle of Marino and take over as a franchise quarterback. And you're seeing all the tools, physical and mental, in this second-year player out of Texas A&M. That's right. Daniel Thomas is the back next to Tannehill. And on first down, here's his shot for his speedster. Wallace through his hands. Step for step with his high school buddy, who is known since they were six. Good play, Keenan Lewis. Thought that was a good throw. Great go route against press coverage. Go up and get it. I think Wallace needs to go up and get it, but it's a nice play by Keenan uh, playing the ball. But I think Wallace should go up and get that, Mike. Couldn't tell if Lewis got a hand on it until I saw the replay. It slides right through the hands of Wallace. Thomas saw the run up the middle. Goes to the 13-yard line. This zone read is very frustrating on defenses, especially if you're a defensive end. You're not even blocked. They're going to read you. If you close, the quarterback keeps it. If you come up the field, the quarterback gives it much better by Junior Gallette the second time around. He's the one who got burned on that 26-yard opening quarter run by Tannehill. 36. Pocket collapsing, the throw is complete to Brandon Gibson, who accelerates the 40-yard line. Gibson a first down. You know, when you're a slot receiver, you have to come across the middle with authority. And you have to be able to read man or zone. And when it's man-to-man, -man, you stay on the run. And this third down, you see Gibson do an excellent job, run through coverage. And I like the north and south run after the catch.
Gain of 28 for Gibson, who's come in here and become the slot receiver for this Miami team after his time three plus seasons with St. Louis. 41, Tannehill on the slant to his other receiver, Brian Hartline. First down into Saints territory for the former Ohio State Buckeye. And this is a common play that's going around pro football. You run the zone read, you run the zone read, then you run the play action pass off of it. That time the linebackers step up and Hartline is wide open on a slant pattern. Great play selection by Miami on this drive. They change the coverage and that forced Tannehill to abort the play and keep it for three. There is a penalty flag down. Good. Eight men on the line of scrimmage. I think Miami covered up the tight end. Illegal formation. Offense. Number 11 covered up number 84. Five yard penalty. First Good pick up there, and John, on that play, when we see it so often, that quick screen, just throw it right out to the receiver. That time, the defensive back came down there and took it away from Tannehill. Oh, when a tight end's on the line of scrimmage, you got to be off the line of scrimmage, and Mike Wallace has played enough football to know a lot better than that. Only two penalties the last two weeks for the Dolphins. They have two here tonight. Tannehill taking off, escaping. Lost the football. He's had a problem with fumbles thus far this year. It was Curtis Lofton who popped it out, and the Saints have recovered. That's a great play by Curtis Lofton, but it's a great point by you, Mike. You must protect the football better than Ryan Tannehill has protected it as a runner. Curtis Lofton, great play. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by GMC. Enter the Never Say Never sweepstakes for a chance to win a 2014 GMC vehicle at gmc.com slash NFL. The new LG G2. Accomplish more. With LG, it's all possible. And NFLshop.com. Get free shipping today at the official store of the NFL. Some of the good sounds of New Orleans. Coming out of uh, almost every door, almost every street. Tannehill turns it over. It is his sixth fumble of the year, as we mentioned, caused by Curtis Lofton. So that's six turnovers or fumbles by Tannehill. That's as many fumbles as the Dolphins have all year. All six. He has the most in the league. Shot time here for the New Orleans Saints. New Orleans takes over from their own 38 with Meacham in the game going deep and a lot of space underneath for Pierre Thomas. It's down Thomas, gain of a dozen to midfield. Screen pass on a sudden change. Dolphins revved up their pass rush. Nice call by Sean Payton getting the ball to Pierre Thomas on a screen out the weak side against the Blitz. Good downfield blocking. New Orleans is a very good screen team. They use it to complement this great pass offense. Pierre Thomas has a real feel for it. Thought Wheeler, 52, got held there. Not detected from midfield. It is Breeze looking deep. It's covered. He just gets rid of it. And out of bounds in the general area of Benjamin Watson. Olivier Vernon, defensive end, putting on the pressure. When Meacham comes in the game, it's shot time for the Saints. They love to send Meacham on all kind of double moves. This time you're going to see Meacham on a double move back to the post and Breeze has a maximum protection but Rashad Jones that Gruden grinder we talked about in the first half Mike did a nice job in coverage he's got to earn it back after he yes, sit on the opening play and scrolls it up the sideline the safety for the Dolphins second and ten and a Breeze pass complete Benjamin Watson with the first down we have a flag down back by the protection for Breeze and this might come back Holding. Offense number 66. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Ben Grubbs and these guards are having a tough time with the interior push of Miami's defense here. Yeah, watching Miami's defense coming into this ball game, every guard in the league struggles mm -hmm. 
with the defensive tackle play of the Miami Dolphins, and it all starts right there. They create for the defensive ends by pushing the pocket. They're hard to run the ball against between the tackles. They're massive and they're athletic. You don't want to fall behind in a down of distance against Miami. In the addition of the two linebackers, LB and Wheeler as free agents this year. Nearly fortified that second line. Breeze looking deep, looking towards Colston. Extends and can't bring it in. Nolan Carroll, who's starting for Dimitri Patterson for the third straight week, will hobble as he gets up. Been an unsung hero of this 3-0 start for Miami. When you lose Dimitri Patterson, somebody has to come in and cover these great receivers. And Nolan Carroll's done a nice job week in and week out. Patterson had a couple of interceptions in the Dolphins' win over Cleveland. They won at Cleveland, at Indy, and beat Atlanta rallying last week to get to this 3-0 start. Now third and 20, rushing three, dropping eight. Can they catch up with Strolls? No! Darren Strolls leading 20. Gets 20 on. First down six. That is a pack breaker. Three-man rush. They invite the rush to the inside, and Darren Sproles just runs a slip screen to the outside, and there's nobody there. Grubbs, wow. De La Puente, Jerry Evans on the second level, and Jimmy Graham throws an excellent block, but third down and 20. Three-man rush. Look at this personnel now. Big offensive tackle, number 79. Bryce Harris is checked in at tight end. A lot of different personnel coming and going. And Nolan Carroll, the corner who was hurt earlier, has had to check out as we have a whistle with that new personnel in there. They weren't on the same page. Ball start. Offense number 79. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And John, we mentioned Carroll on that play down the sideline with Colston was a bit hobbled. So Jamar Taylor, the second-round pick out of Boise State, who's inactive for the first three games, making his debut here tonight. This is uh, welcome to the NFL against Drew Brees and the Saints. And I'll bet three coaches just called down to Sean Payton and said, throw the ball to the left side against number 22. A rookie's in there. They're going to find out about number 22, Jamar Taylor, quick. He's got Marcus Colston over there on his side. First and 15 after the flag. And Brees stepping up. It'll take off and slide and protect the ball and get the penalty yardage back with a gain of five. His athletic ability, vastly underrated. We all know he can make all the throws, but it's hard to get a bad play against Drew Brees. He's got a clock in his head. He knows when to take off. And Tannehill should watch how Drew Brees protects himself and the football. He's done an excellent job of that over the years. About 50 from Miami. Vernon on that pass rush. Got over Pierre Thomas, who was going to chop him, pass the tackle. He's one of the fourth breeze to take off. Third round pick. Play clock running down as Breeze gets rid of it. Again, it is Scrolls who is killing the Dolphins in this first half. That's all Drew Breeze. He uses a dummy snap count. They're in a no back set. They see a linebacker one-on-one -on -one with Darren Sproles. I don't know any defensive backs that would like to see that quickness down after down. But when New Orleans comes after you in these no-back formations and they spread Sproles and Graham and these great receivers all across the field, hard to match up with them. See that 106-101 is receiving. 90 of it after the short passes. It's the third time in Sproles' career that he has over 100 receiving yards. We're not even through a quarter and a half. We haven't talked about Jimmy Graham yet. Breeze. Graham! Held on! Touchdown, Saints! And you see 22, Jamar Taylor, the rookie from Boise. He just gets into the game as a rookie. Third play, he's out there. He says, who is this Jimmy Graham? <laughs> play action pass, and Drew Breeze knew he had the size advantage. Watch Graham. Little out and up to the outside, and Sean Payton 
what went right after the rookie, just like you'd expect him to. And Graham continues to deliver week in and week out with magical acrobatic catches. That coverage wasn't all that bad. <laughs> I know it. It's nice when the guy's six seven and can go up and get it. Extra point, Garrett Hartley. Well, Sproles walks him down the field, including that big pickup on third and 20. And it gives Jimmy Graham a chance to get to the end zone for the fifth time in four games. 14-3, New Orleans. Really, honey, I'm going out with the guys tonight. Really. I'm gonna watch that guy, 6-7, Jimmy Graham. Tied for second now in the league in the last two plus seasons. 25 touchdown receptions. And you hear coach after coach, defensive coordinator, all over the league say we've got the guy covered and still he makes the catches incredible height and catching radius of Graham Marcus Thickpen bringing it out nice block from Tyler Klutz that allows him to get close to the 20 yard line Tony Gonzalez continues his magic on into his late years of his career and this is just the fourth year for the guy who played in basketball at the University of Miami, he slam dunks the Dolphins. Every day, a couple of great hours of NFL information. Susie Culver hosting the NFL Insiders. Weekdays, 3 Eastern on ESPN, followed by Trey Wingo and the panel of experts on NFL Live at 4 Eastern. The back to back, a couple hours every day. If it's going on in the league, you'll find out about it. The Insiders and NFL Live. You think about the Dolphins, the third and one they couldn't pick up, forced to settle for a field goal. And then the last drive, Tannehill moving them down the field, fumbles. Saints get the ball, and they come down the field and score, making it an 11-point game. Lamar Miller turning the corner, hard hit on Miller. And he'll get a first down, gain of 10. And John, when you come to play New Orleans, you know you can't make these types of mistakes. Not short yardage, third and inches at the 10-yard line. And then you're driving, as you say, and Curtis Lofton forces a fumble. Third down and 21. Watch the screen to Darren Sproles, and those three plays have a lot to do with where we are right now. All of a sudden, it puts a ton of pressure on your offense because you know Breeze and company are likely not done for the night. Because of the noise, Tannehill goes up to the line to adjust the play with his front five. And return another Miller run. Well, John, Mike Sherman, the offensive coordinator you spoke about, he spoke to us last night quite candidly. He said, look, we can't continue down the path of the lack of a running game that we've shown so far, only 3.3 yards per carry this year. And they've run the ball better, and they've done it different ways. They've used the zone read as a big factor tonight. And Lamar Miller is a good back if they give him some good looks. So clearly, this offensive line got his message, and they're blocking better. Especially those interior guys. Pouncey, Incognito, and John Jerry. Slant, tight window, caught by Hartline. I just moved the ball at times okay in their first four drives. Now, Hartline had over 1,000 yards last year. Everybody talks about Mike Wallace, but I just get a sneaky feeling that Hartline is Tannehill's go-to receiver. Nice slant pattern. Good concentration in a crowd. These receivers do not switch sides. Hartline is always on the left. Wallace is on the right, and they never huddle. There's some 10 that time. The defensive front closing things down. There's no room for Miller to run. Take a look at Hartline and Wallace. They're going to stay out of the huddle. They're going to line up on their respective sides. They get the signal from the bench. And Miami puts their offensive line in this mush huddle close to the ball. It's almost like a no huddle offense. And I think they'd like to get to a more up-tempo style as Tanny Hill continues to get comfortable in the NFL. They just brought in a different receiver, Rashard Matthews. We had a couple of big catches on the game-winning drive against Atlanta last week. Tannehill throws, and it's dropped, so it'll be incomplete. As it was intended for Brandon Gibson, and Lofton 
knocked it out. Man, Jonathan Vilma was the leader, patrolled the middle for this defense. He's hurt. Now it's lost in the last two years. Well, he recognizes splits, formations. And he's seen that route a thousand times. And that's the second time the Saints' leading tackler has dis dislodged the football from a Miami Dolphin. Great work. Brings the ears, Mike. Third and nine, pressure comes. Tannehill gets rid of it, and there goes Marcus Thigpen. The kick returner looks like he's returning a kick. Big Ben put on the Jets, and he's tripped up inside the 10 by Raphael Bush. Completely fooled the Saints defense. Big Ben acted like he was going to block. Watch him. He's going to act like a blocker, and the rush is going to come. And nobody accounts for him. Good open field running. Nice call. In a blitz situation by Mike Sherman. Let's see if Miami can finish a drive. Second reception of his career is a big one, 50 yards. And this team that's been good in the red zone really needs a touchdown here. And the seven. That hill tosses just a gain of two to Gibson. The slot receiver. Talk about what makes a good red zone offense. Uh, it's a quarterback with a, a big arm and good decision making. And Tannehill has shown that thus far this year. They like this one back set. It puts Tannehill in a check with me situation. He's going to count the box. And they'll give him a runner pass option. He checks to the run. And it's Miller. And it's touchdown. Miami big score for the Dolphins. When you get all these great receivers, Wallace, Hartline, you spend money on Gibson, you put 70 million into your wide receiver core, defensive coordinators want to expand their coverage. And you count the box, it's awful soft in there, so they're just going to hand the ball on an inside zone play. There's nobody there. That's way too easy. Richie Incognito inside, pro bowler last year with that last ceiling block. Paved the way for Lamar Miller. Caleb Sturgis. Tacks on the extra point. It is not easy to respond in this dome with that noise. The Tannehill and the Dolphins do just that. Four point game. football world takes some strange turns. Mickey Loomis has been the general manager here since 2002. He's in the upper left. Hired Sean Payton 2006, the post-Katrina year. They needed a quarterback. Drew Brees was being courted by Miami and New Orleans. Remember, he had hurt his shoulder in San Diego. They didn't need him anymore because they had Phillip Rivers. So Payton gets Brees here, and they're talking football on his visit to New Orleans. When Brees visited Miami, the conversation was about his shoulder and a lot of tests on his shoulder. Touchback here. The Saints will take over at the 20. The Dolphins had six independent doctors look at Breeze's shoulder, and they said he may not play next year or again. Saints doctors said okay, and the Saints needed to take a risk. Six years, $60 million. They bring Drew Breeze with Peyton. We've told you the historic half offensively that they put up all these record-setting numbers. And Mickey Loomis said and Miami was out there with an offer, and the Miami offer, the New Orleans offer. He had to go back and forth with that, but... At the end of the day, Drew Brees just felt a fit here because of Sean Payton, because of the calling that this city had with their crisis. And when they write the story of the New Orleans Saints, a big chapter will be Brees and Payton together, helping resurrect a franchise and help rebuild the city. He could have been a Dolphin. Kyrie Robinson on the run to the left, gains only a half yard. And John, just to finish that thought, Drew doesn't hold any ill feelings at this point towards Miami. He understands the way it worked out. He was almost drafted by the Dolphins when he came out, as a matter of fact. But he said for some reason it just felt right, top to bottom, football and life, that I ended up here. It's all worked out for him. A lot of people didn't think he could play again with the injury. And unfortunately for me and my career, our people didn't think he could either. You were in Tampa, then he comes to this division, and they've been one of the best teams in any division since they've been together. On the sideline, that's caught by Kenny Stills. And set up a third down coming up. Say this about Sean Payton, though. 
Signing Drew Brees took a lot of guts. There was a lot of risk involved, mm -hmm. giving him $60 million with that injury, and the doctors proved it. But he's the guttiest coach in the league. How many guys use a surprise onside kick and open the second half in the Super Bowl? Mm -hmm. Take guts to fire your defensive coordinator and bring in another one when you come back from a suspension. And a lot of coaches might have gone another direction after what happened last year, but I admire him and his guts coming back here to New Orleans and finishing the job. This is third and three for Breeze. And on the slant, it's broken up. Saints sideline wants a flag, but Nolan Carroll back in the game after that ankle was looked at. Able to knock it away from the rookie, and it's three and out for the Saints. Well, that's rookie Kenny Stills filling in for Lance Moore. This is a simple slant pattern, and Nolan Carroll has made two impressive plays in this game. A lot of people are excited about Stills. They say he reminds the Saint Brass of Lance Moore, but that time, Nolan Carroll was up to the challenge. And that's what Miami does. They hang around, hang around, and they find a way in the fourth quarter. I'd be leery if I were the Saints. Forstead to kick again. 46 yards with a lot of hang time. Big pen. And he's tackled by the defensive back, Malcolm Jenkins. So Miami will take over at the 32. A score and a stop. And the Dolphins with 2.13 left. Down 14-10. And back on the field with Ryan Tannehill in the offense. From New Orleans, we'll send it up to Chris Berman and the Toyota Halftime. We have the Sunday soundtracks Listen in on that Texans Wild overtime game with Seattle. We've got the Sunday Gruden Grinder. How can you not love that face, huh? Who were the grinders from yesterday? And the week four favorite as people have weighed in for, come on, man. Coming up on the Toyota Halftime. Chris Carter would be proud of me the way I delivered that, right? I sure would, Mike. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> First and ten. For Miami, down four. And Tannehill will look to run it inside with Daniel Thomas. 35, and that should take us to the two-minute warning. This Dolphin team trying to do what it did last week and get a score before halftime. Though they get the ball to start the third. Two-minute warning in New Orleans. 39th year they've been holding sporting events here in New Orleans inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, as it's now known, inside of two minutes. So any replay situations initiated from upstairs in the booth. Brian Tannehill very proud of the fact that Miami put emphasis on scoring at the end of halves. And they've scored field goals at the end of the first half each of the last two weeks. Tannehill's throw is complete. Brandon Gibson had the first down. And his forward progress will keep it at 42. I want to see this defensive line, this pass rush group of the Saints get after Tannehill. A lot of young no-names in there. 97, Glenn Foster, rookie, undrafted free agent from Illinois. Tyron Walker, undrafted from Tulsa. They have to get, get a pass rush. First down, slant is jumped and intercepted. I don't think Jabari Greer was touched. He's down the sideline, and Greer at the 23, and the Saints in great field position. One thing I don't like about the shotgun when you throw the quick game. The timing is off. I don't think Candy Hill saw Jabari Greer jump that slant, but he clearly cut Hartline off. Hartline's got a cross face, but that time Jabari Greer read the split and he jumped that route. Candy Hill's got to see it somehow. The bigger your split, the more inclined these veteran corners are to play inside technique, and that's exactly what Jabari Greer, the veteran, did. That's the second turnover, Mike. And that's the one thing head coach Joe Philbin told us. We must correct the turnover battle, and Mike Sherman is sick. And you give Drew Brees a lot of time, three timeouts, and sensational field position. <laughs> they love to do this, empty the backfield, and put Graham and Scrolls on the same side. They're both at the top. Come back the other way and underneath the stills at the 12-yard line, first down. He just reads your mail. 
They motion, they shift, they take their time, they reset, they give Drew Brees the keys to New Orleans, and they let him audible to an optimum play, and time and time again, he's always right. Sean Payton takes the timeout, 73 seconds until halftime. Now, it's only a quarter of the way through the season, but the Saints can get off to as good a start as you could have imagined if they win tonight. Because there'll be two and a half games up in the division over Carolina, which off last week. They'd be three up on the Falcons and already have a head-to-head -head victory over Atlanta, in addition to a victory over the Bucks. But Atlanta, the team that was the number one seed in the NFC last year, so many people with good expectations for the Falcons this year, to be three games up, plus a tiebreak, a uh, head-to-head one win right now. So essentially three and a half up a quarter of the way through. About as good as you can hope for for New Orleans, if they can win here tonight. Critical that Miami calls on their red zone defense. They led the NFL last year in red zone stops. They mix it up very well, and they're stout against the run. Here comes the double-A gap blitz look. Three sees it and changes the play. And the whistle for movement. It's going to be on Miami for encroachment. Neutral zone attraction. Defense number 50. Five yard penalty. You know, we had Peyton Manning last week. We get Drew Brees this week. The amount of work and research that these quarterbacks do before the ball is snapped is amazing. And the quarterback gets full control in these offenses. Their CEOs and Sean Payton knows to trust Drew Brees in these critical situations. But watch him decipher this defense and his no-back look. And then Miami adjusts to the adjustment. And Brees in trouble, brought down by Olivier Vernon. First full sack for last year's third-round pick. Good coverage in the secondary. Brees had to hold it. And Vernon, another very good pass rusher in this Dolphin defensive front. Coming off your left side, he stays alive and beats Charles Brown. First-year starter at left tackle. So another timeout taken, 66 seconds. Second and 11 for this Miami Dolphin defense off to the undefeated start. Patriots winning last night up to 4-0. Matter of fact, this division has surprised many with the Jets at 2-2. Two and, two. and how about Doug Marone and the Bills beating Baltimore up in Orchard Park yesterday? This is a tougher division than I think folks forecast. Yeah, there's a lot of football left to be played. And every head coach that I know, they break the season down into quarters, four-game segments. And if you can go 2-2 two and two in every quarter, Mike, you win eight games. But if you can win four and a quarter, hey, that's pretty good, man. That's how I did it. Ryan, and Benjamin Watson, the other tight end in here. They watch the draw here Monday, to Darren Scrolls. All the work all week on display here. Breeze, flushed, resets, throws incomplete. Almost a chance for Nick Toon to break it and take it, but Nolan Carroll got in the way. Or they tried to get the ball to Darren Sproles on a choice route. And number 53 for Miami, Jelani Jenkins, the rookie, does a nice job with help over the top from Koa Nisi, doubling him. And when you get doubled, if you're all by yourself like Nick Toon was, you have to win. And a former Wisconsin Badger needs to make that play. John, that was the second time Olivier Vernon, 50, got some pressure on. He'll be at the bottom of the screen, rushing Breeze on uh, third and 11. But first, Miami takes a timeout. 60 seconds left. Very big third down here at the end of the half for the Dolphins' defense. Ryan Tannehill turned it over earlier on a fumble. New Orleans went down the field and scored a touchdown. Now he's hoping that his second turnover of the night doesn't have the same result. Counting on his defense, stout in the red zone last year to come up big on third and 11 against Drew Brees and the Saints. Brees throws out of the backfield, caught it for the touchdown. It was a gamble lost by Nolan Carroll. 
Well, these long yardage situations are killing the Miami Dolphins. Third and 12, third and 20, that time third and 11 in the red zone. It's just a swing route out of the backfield. Nolan Carroll's going for the interception, and you better be right when you try to make a play on the ball. Poor angle by Carroll, who we complimented tonight in coverage that time. He's got to pay for his mistake, and Darren Sproles is really taking it to the Dolphins. Darren Sproles having an outstanding receiving night as the two Miami turnovers have turned into Saints touchdowns and an 11-point lead with 55 seconds to go. What a night for Darren Sproles. It's only been that first half already. Has a flatten up early in the game. He sets up a touchdown. Great work. Then a draw play. Walks in for a touchdown. Third down and 20. A little chip screen. He goes and gets it himself. 22-yard gain. Then on third and 11, he comes out of the backfield and Drew Brees throws a back shoulder ball to a running back that's five foot five. Now, I've seen some great throws. I've seen back shoulder passes, but I've not seen a quarterback throw a back shoulder pass to a running back that's five foot five out of the backfield for a touchdown. So Nolan Carroll, he's saying the same thing. You got to be kidding me. Turnovers by Miami, Mike. Big story in this game. And Tannehill's turnover turns into six again. John Sproul's perspective on that receiving number, 114 receiving yards in the first half. That's the second most by a running back in terms of receiving yards in the first half in five years. Arian Foster had a 119-yard receiving half a couple of years ago for Houston. He had a big play as part of that. So a heck of a start for Sproul's in this first half. No return for Marcus Thigpen. We shouldn't be surprised that we've seen Sproles do this ever since he came in the league. Since 2005, he throw the pump return yards, the kickoff return yards, the rushing yards, these receiving yards. Nobody, Josh Cripps, Wes Welker, Stephen Jackson, nobody with more total combined yards than Darren Sproles. He's not a running back. He's a all-purpose back, and he's a combination of Cripps, Welker, and Stephen Jackson all rolled into one. You know how uh, Jacksonville, early on, they've gotten away from it, put Denard Robinson as O.W. offensive weapon on their roster? That's an O.W. right there. And a carry up the middle for Lamar Miller. It's a short game, and each team can stop at once. And I mentioned Joe Philbin and Miami gets the ball back to start the second half. He's going to have something to say about these turnovers. Dolphins have had four straight losing seasons. They're minus 36 in the turnover battle. New England is plus 76. Well, they're minus two tonight and they're losing again. For Miami to take a big step forward, they've got to win the turnover battle. He's take a knee here and Sean Payton will not take his last time out. And the teams will head to the locker room. And the research continues. At 21 in the first half, Reeves looking to find ways to find more in the second half. Miami gets it first, they're down 11, and here's Chris Berman with a Toyota halftime. Watch him research his Dolphin defense. There's Darren Sproles, touchdown! Back in the Superdome, final half of football here in September 2013. The Saints up 11, Miami gets the ball to start the third quarter. We'll hear from Lisa Salters down on the sideline in a bit. Mike Tariqo, John Gruden here in the booth. 8,000 times you can say, we've got to win the turnover battle. And when you don't, you have a hard time winning. And evidence right here tonight. Two turnovers, two touchdowns. I'll tell you what Rob Ryan and the Saints are doing on defense is they're not blitzing at all. They're not presenting any sophisticated looks. They're forcing the young quarterback to move the drop, drive down the field and finish it. And so far, they've been un unable to do it. And this is a Saints defense that is a little unheralded, missing some of their bigger names, and playing three safeties a lot, almost a 3-3-5 look a lot of times. Yeah, they're almost daring Miami to run the ball. But again, they're counting on Miami to make a mistake, whether it be a penalty, not converting in a short yardage situation, or turning the ball over. 
they've done some nice things on offense. We see the skill level of Tannehill and his supporting cast, but they have to be disciplined enough to finish a drive against this Saint defense. So you're Joe Philbin. As you're walking out, you kind of grab your quarterback. What would you tell him here before the second half? Everything is there for us. Just calm down. Let's put a drive together here, make it a one-score game. We've done it three times already this year. We've been behind coming into the third quarter. Just keep doing what you're doing. Relax. 50-yard reception by Marcus Thigpen earlier on was key in the touchdown drive that Miami had. And Thomas Morstead, who's more times than not made it a touchback on a kickoff. We'll do so again. And we send it downstairs to Lisa Salter. Hey, Mike, well, I asked Joe Philbin about those two turnovers of Brian Tannehill's. He said the interception, the corner made a great play. But the fumble, he said he's just got to do a better job of protecting the ball. He really has to get down to the ground when he's running. About Darren Squirrels, he said we tried different personnel on him. He's a great player, but we've got to do a better job of making plays. We should have made that play at the end of the half. Sean Payton said that Drew Brees has really done a great job of finding Squirrels. I asked him what makes Squirrels such a mismatch. And he says it's explosive and good in space, Mike. And we have seen that in spades in the first half. Thanks, Lee. Good stuff. Tannehill and the Dolphins start at the 20. Lamar Miller to the left. Capped off by Bush to safety. Gain of almost five. Well, you got to finish your drive. Third and inches early in the game. Rookie John Jenkins stuffs it. And then Curtis Lofton ends another Dolphin drive by forcing a fumble. And then Tannehill was intercepted by Jabari Greer. Turnovers, short yardage. Situations have hurt Miami. Second and five to the middle and behind Mike Wallace. An incomplete storyline coming into this game was Mike Wallace, who went to high school five miles from here, O'Perry Walker High School in the Algiers section of New Orleans. Going up against Keenan Lewis. These guys have known each other since they were little kids. Well, Wallace is wide open. They clear out the inside of the Saint defense. He rolls inside. He's wide open. Tannehill's got to make this throw. Not sure if he and Wallace aren't on the same page, but I think Tannehill just missed that one. Wallace said as much. But those guys aren't there just yet like he is with Hartline and some of the other receivers. Blitz is picked up. And the pass is incomplete as Brandon Gibson was trying to get free and the Miami sideline wanted a flag. But none is thrown, and that's a three and out for the Dolphins. This Malcolm Jenkins, number 27, Kenny Vaccaro, 32. They have cornerback skills, even though they're safeties. But Jenkins has done an excellent job tonight playing in the slot as a nickel corner. He's also played deep in the post. Two good, young First round safeties here in Kenny Vaccaro and Malcolm Jenkins. Brandon Fields, league leader last year, averaged 50 a kick. Sends this one beyond that average. 57 yards. Scrolls makes the first man miss and returns it to the 34 yard line. That's what Drew Brees in this offense will get back to work. Look at these two touchdowns. There's no tendencies. This is a pass pattern by the wide receivers, and they run a draw play to break a tendency. Then they put all these linemen and tight ends in there. You'd think it's a running play, but no, it's a post route with an out and up by Jimmy Graham. They get Miami to think it's a run. They throw the ball. They get Miami to think it's a pass. They run the ball. Sean Payton has a lot of plays. He has no tendencies, and he also has a quarterback, Mike, named Drew Brees, who has mastery of this system. And right now, he's looking Player for the knockout punch. Went out of bounds. Kicking team, five-yard penalty from the end of the run. New Orleans keeps the ball. First down. Bill Vinovich with the call. He, one of the gunners voluntarily went out of bounds. Wasn't pushed out. So that adds five and attack on. And even better field position for this New Orleans offense. The 41, right back to the throwing game, which has been effective, and Marcus Colston gains nine to get it to midfield, just the second time he's been targeted at his first catch tonight. Yeah, you forget Colston is still here. We've talked about Sproles and Graham tonight. 
This is the all-time leading receiver for New Orleans. He sees the blitz. He breaks his pattern off, and Breeze hits him. Quick count. It's the ninth run of the night, and it sprawls. It's so hard to find at uh, five foot, whatever you want to call him, and he gets the first down. Extremely quick. He hides behind his blockers. A lot of people don't realize how powerful Darren Sproles is. Thick, ultra quick. And in the go zone, here comes Robert Meacham, number 17. And when they bring in the former Tennessee volunteer, they like to take shots. Keep an eye on Meacham at the top of the screen. Why is this the go zone? Well, it's a midfield first down. We'll run inside with Thomas at the 45-yard line. There are certain areas where teams get on the field where they feel really good about certain plays. Like you said, doing it on first down is such an advantage with the players you have, like a Colston and a Yeah, and it's a constant change of personnel that's driving Miami crazy. They're trying to match up with Sproles, trying to match up with Graham. Now they come with their big personnel, but... They attack you, even though they're not using a no-huddle offense. They attack you with tremendous tempo. You ready for shot? 45, Breeze, plants, resets, and fires. Colts to the gain of 14. Well, they're going for Meacham. They're in the go zone. They cross midfield. They want to throw the ball to Meacham. And he terrorizes you deep. And they let Colston work underneath. He breaks to the outside and watch him come back and uncover. Very instinctive six foot four Marcus Colston. But when they call a shot play, that doesn't mean Drew Brees is just going to drop back and launch it. He distinctly goes through his progression and utilizes all five of his eligible receivers. Great work. Some kind of career for a player taken really at the end of the draft. Few picks from the last one. Thomas inside the 30, 29-yard line. So Marcus Colston taking that 06 draft. There's four picks to the bottom. When you look at the history of the league, most touchdown passes, the combination Manning and Harrison off the charts, Young and Rice, Marino and Clayton, Dolphin fans, you remember that. There's Peyton and Reggie Wayne, Jim Kelly and Andre Reid in the old days, Johnny U and Raymond Berry. And then Drew Brees and Marcus Colston. I never figured you'd see that, but they're four away from equaling the great... Unitas and Berry combination. Second and eight. There's a slap. There's Colston. First and goal at the seven. They motion Jimmy Graham outside of Colston. You rarely see a tight end motion outside of a wide receiver. And when Graham goes, Bree sees he has the matchup. Colston versus a linebacker. And who do you expect to win? Mike, I mean, it's just unfair. It's these formations over and over again that are just demoralizing to a defense. Posted non-factor in the first half. The scrolls did all the work. He's tied up inside the five with Chris Clemens in this Miami defense. Absolutely needs to come up with a stop here and keep him only to three. With these great quarterbacks, they love these run pass check with knees. Sean Payton going with Pierre Thomas. Here comes Ben Watson. Out goes Graham. Out goes Toom. But they love to put the quarterback in a two for one situation. Call a play and kill it with another. And Drew Brees is going to see the deployment of the Dolphins and do what he sees fit. Looked over the top. It was covered. Leaking out is Benjamin Watson. Did he get there? Looks like he did. Touchdown, Saints. How about the ball handler? They're going to fake the draw to Pierre Thomas and then fake a post pattern and then throw a delayed check down to Ben Watson. Superb execution. Ben Watson had 150 catches in the last three years for the Cleveland Browns. You forget all about all these weapons in New Orleans. Also with the Patriots, former first-round pick, they will look at that upstairs to make sure that it was a touchdown when the knee was down. He crossed the plane, and Bill Vinovich gave you the thumbs up. The game's replay booth confirms it's a score. And Garrett Hartley makes it 28-10. 
whistle while you work here in New Orleans. His offense working one more time. Nice car. Sure is. Make a deal with me, kid. You can have the car and everything that goes along with it. So what do you say? Thanks, but I think I got this. The all-new CLA, starting at 29900 Applebee's doesn't just give you juicy steak. They top it off with sweet honey and a kick of cracked black pepper in their signature honey pepper sauce. And they top that top off with crispy fried jalapenos and onions. And the top the top of that top off, it's on their famous two for 20 menu. Applebee's new honey pepper sirloin. See you tomorrow. Oh, I'm missing kickoff for this. <laughs> Fear of missing out on football can be triggered by many things. Download NFL Mobile. Get coverage of every NFL game exclusively from Verizon. We were north of here in some remote, rugged terrain when we realized we left gear behind. We were up the creek without a paddle. I mean, we literally needed paddles. Campbell had left them in his garage. Thankfully, I had my Navy Federal Credit Union credit card on me, so we got new paddles and earned cash back. Next time, we'll remember the paddles. Seriously? And forget Campbell. Four million members, four million stories. Navy Federal Credit Union. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Saints look like they're on their way to 4-0. As New Orleans gets off to this perfect start to the season after 7-9 last year. A few years removed from that Super Bowl championship. That was one in Miami. Well, they beat Indianapolis. Dolphins in their time played a Super Bowl here in New Orleans, but the one that was played at Tulane Stadium, they lost that one. Two teams represent cities that have hosted so many Super Bowls. No return for Marcus Thigpen, and it's a touchback. But it has been a party for the Saints and all their offensive weapons on display. The majesty of Breeze. Too short? Nah. He knows where to go and what to do. Would you like some beignets, sir? A little cafe au lait, cafe du monde? You know I like those. Yeah, pretty good, huh? What a great city. Hospitality unbelievable. Do they love their saints or not? City Hall closed at 4 o'clock today, an hour early. Just to give everyone a chance to get ready for the game. Daniel trying to set up the screen. And here goes Daniel Thomas. He's caught by David Hawthorne. And then Curtis Lofting comes in to finish the business. Great play by the ex-Seattle Seahawk. When you play man-to-man -man coverage and there's a screen coming out the weak side, you have to get there before these linemen can get to you. And that time he got off Pouncey's block and made a big play for this St. defense. Hawthorne and Lofton, two veteran inside linebackers that have picked up their play under Rob Ryan. Keenan Lewis, the corner, is not on the field for the Saints. They go after that spot and get it to Mike Wallace, and it's incomplete as his replacement, Corey White, second-year man out of Samford, made the big hit. Mike Wallace been awful quiet. Just an outside breaking route. You see Corey White drive on it. You're going to get hit in this league. You might as well catch it and put it away. That ball was tipped. It distracted Wallace. Kenny Vaccaro. Kenny Vaccaro's a factor. So again, White watching Wallace. Pressure on Tannehill. Not going to get away. Sacked by Junior Gallette, his third of the year. Junior Gallette beats Jonathan Martin bad. Tannehill never saw him. He's going to come off the left side. And Tannehill had no chance. But a lot of people around this league are finding out who Junior Gallette is. He and Cameron Jordan have given the Saints a 1-2 combination. Rushing the passer. Gallette, 25 years old. Jordan, 24. 
Brandon Fields and back deep didn't hit a good one 43 yards a line drive here goes number 43 Darren Sproles ran into his own man and it helped slow him down for John Denny and Jason Trusnick to make the special team stop the Saints have it in Dolphin territory Franken scored the last two possessions Saints up 18. What makes the good ones really good? The special things. These are the attributes you point to with Drew Brees. Well, he's great under pressure, his touch, his location. But how about his ability to go through his progressions and have the awareness to get to the second and third option? Here he is just a minute ago. They're going to try to throw a little looky and go to Kenny Stills up top right here. But he's covered. So watch Drew Brees reset and go through his progression and find Benjamin Watson. I mean... He's going to find a second and third option time and time again. Hard to stop this guy, I tell you what. That was a great example of everything that he does because that first look was not there. The ball handling, all the small stuff we talk about, the work that we don't see, but all in one fell swoop there. He got the Dolphins for six. Got tremendous poise and a mastery of all these plays, and they surround him with some of the best players in the world. It's fun to watch. Did you just draw here on the big screen? This toy is unbelievable. You got more toys. Play with it. <laughs> so here is Breeze from the 43, taking the shot. Jimmy Graham, home again. Touchdown, New Orleans. I've been telling you about that pattern. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here, but boy, that pattern excites me. Sluggo scene, they call it here in New Orleans. It's like getting a beignet. It's so popular. <laughs> They're going to fake a slant and go on the left and move the free safety. And Breeze has Jimmy Graham running down the scene incredibly often in this arena that we love to come to, but that's all Drew Breeze manipulating the free safety with his eyes, and Jimmy Graham is a beast down the scene. Hartley again. As a minute 32, two scores, and Jimmy Graham with touchdowns of 27 and 43 yards, his only two catches of the night, and New Orleans has turned this into a route very quickly. Let me show you this thing on this new toy I got. It's called Sluggo Seam. Okay. It's a pattern they run here. It's very popular. You can see with the crowd, with the crowd. But let me draw this up for you, Mike. They're going to run a slant and go. And they're going to try to move the free safety to vacate the seam for Jimmy Graham. And watch what happens. He looks down here. He moves the free safety. They vacate the seam. It's like a beignet. Beignet. Down here in the beignet? beignet. Is that what it is? A sluggo <laughs> seam. Hey, you can't. I, I got to put this on a training reel of some kind. But Jimmy Graham right down the seam. But you got to credit Drew Brees with moving Rashad Jones. What would you do if you were free safety and they pump a sluggo to your left? You're going to go way. that way. That's the well, here comes Jimmy go. Graham, and he's dunking it over the goalpost again. Who that? I don't know. Well, this is a Saints offense that's starting to look like the 2011 Saints offense, the 2009 Saints offense. This is a Miami defense that I think you thought very highly of coming into this game. And they are without Cameron Wake, their punt, uh, pass rusher, but it doesn't matter. They've been solid here in this stretch in the second and the start of the third as we go down to Lisa. Hey, Mike, well, I talked to Jimmy Graham about the chemistry that he has with Drew Brees this season. He said that this offseason was really the first time that they got to work together when Graham first got here to New Orleans. They had just won the Super Bowl, so there was a lot going on. Then the year after that, there was the lockout. And then the offseason after that, Drew Brees had his contract situation. So really, this offseason was the first time they got to be in OTAs and minicamp. They got to work on timing and experiment with some things, and it really has carried over, he said. Well, Tannehill's going to get sacked here, Lisa, by Martez Wilson, who has that contraption on his elbow that he hurt in the preseason. Things are unraveling here for Tannehill. He's got to play with a clock in his head. He's got to know when that clock goes off, you must get rid of the football. He clearly held the ball too long here against this pass rush of the New Orleans Saints. But Jonathan Martin has to block better on the blind side of Tannehill. They've given up 17 sacks in almost four games.
after back-to-back -back sacks. A quick throw is short for Hartline. Penalty marker down. There's going to be a defensive hold on New Orleans, according to the preliminary indication. Illegal hands in the face. Defense number 32. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. On Kenny Vaccaro. See Vaccaro in the slot. Good call by the official. Got to keep those hands low. Vaccaro, one of the more aggressive rookies I've seen enter pro football in a while. A lot of people here in New Orleans think he reminds them of a young Rodney Harrison. He has tremendous passion for this game. Great instincts and versatility. And when he puts that helmet on on game day, you don't want to be on the other side. Illegal hands to the face carries the automatic first. So from the 17 with a fresh set of downs, Tannehill in traffic gets held onto by Charles Clay. He's uh, in that tight end role. This is a guy who went at Tulsa, played tailback, fullback, tight end, wide receiver, wildcat quarterback, linebacker, defensive end. Clay playing all kinds of roles for Miami now. Well, he just gets a penalty. Let's see what he does the next play. He goes right after the receiver again. That's called a quick jam. And Brandon Gibson better be alert for another one when Vaccaro gets up in his face. To the sideline to Wallace, complete. In front of Corey White again. Keenan Lewis out for New Orleans. You know, defensive coordinator Rob Ryan considered to be a blitzaholic really around the league crazy looks unorthodox blitzes but he has really calmed things down with his young saint defense they're playing hard high energy fundamental defense and it's working for him here in new orleans first and 10 from the 32 pressure is on down again is cameron jordan good night they're exposing the pass protection unit of the Dolphins. Martin is struggling. Clay Bow has had a hard time this year handling power rushes. That time, Cam Jordan just makes an arm over move and silences Tannehill. Too easy. Miami is on schedule to give up more sacks than any time in their history. They must improve their pass protection. Three sacks in the last five snaps. Okay. Fill that with a screen, and there was nowhere to go as Miller was being defended. It was well read by the New Orleans defense. Just give you the update here on Keenan Lewis. A strained leg is returned questionable. And that's why we see Corey White in there tonight. Question no more coming back in. It's a credit to these Saints defensive coaches. Not only Rob Ryan, but Joe Vick who was the interim head coach last year, the linebacker coach. Bill Johnson, the defensive line coach. Both of those are world champions from this Saint program. They're playing hard, they're playing together, and they're using everyone. Saints had a lot of personnel confusion as they were trying to get Lewis on and off the field. So they take timeout. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Applebee's, Applebee's two for $20 menu just got even better with the new Honey Pepper Grill. Navy Federal Credit Union, visit us at NavyFederal.org. And NFL Mobile, learn more about the 60-minute free trial at NFL.com slash mobile. Well, while uh, you've been gone, these Saints fans along for the ride again. It's been up and screaming as the Dolphins get set for third and long. Look at this line of Saints at the 40-yard line. I haven't seen this very much. It's a sticks coverage right where that third down marker is. Tannehill in trouble, floating it for Miller, and it's fourth down. Pass rush, overwhelming Miami in that sequence. And Darren Sproles is still back there, Mike. Adnan, 
to his all-purpose yardage total. He's got to be getting close to some kind of all-purpose yardage record in this game. Maybe not. Hasn't had one of those big kick returns that usually right. gives you a chance to have one of those records. I thought about that right after I said it, but he sure has put on a show tonight, hasn't he? It's not necessarily the yards, it's when they've come. He's been just so destructive. 53 yards on the kick by Fields. And that adds about 18 to the all-purpose yardage with the return by Sproles. So Drew Brees, nine straight games now with 300 passing yards or more. That ties an NFL record that he owned. And here's how he's done it. Everybody said he's too short. He's only six feet tall. Watch him get on his toes. Look at him trying to look over his lineman. But he doesn't have a problem seeing, that's for sure. Look at him peeking over the top of his lineman, surveying the field. Yeah, he's too short, Mike. Nine straight games of over 300 yards. I think he had 55 games in a row where he threw a touchdown pass. He's the surgeon. He'll shred you. Hard guy to deal with. And having his coach back has really sent some positive vibes through this entire city and football team. On the punt return, Jason Trusnick is a very good special teamer. For the Dolphins down, I'd say, in front of the Saints bench. And the Miami medical staff out to look at him. And he'll step out for a moment. Happy to show you that Jason Trusnick got up under his own power, walked across the field, standing over there on the Miami sideline. Trying to tell the athletic training staff that he's fine. But uh, you can see Trusnick walking over there. Well, this has been a great stretch for the Saints. They've scored touchdowns four of their last five possessions, both possessions here in this third quarter, as Kyrie Robinson, the undrafted rookie, takes it to the 48-yard line. Watch the Saints utilize different personnel groupings. Obviously, now they want to run the football. But play after play after play, Sean Payton has utilized different backs, different tight ends, different receivers. This one, I'm looking for a personnel substitution. He's staying with his young halfback. But you could see everybody there was always ready to go. The other two tight ends, we're going to go three tight ends, change the backs. Damn. What a game day assignment that is. Make sure you have the right personnel groups in. It's a play pass for Breeze, who's being chased. Stops to get rid of it as Derek Shelby, second-year man undrafted out of Utah, put the pressure on. So what you have to do is move the launching spot of the quarterback. Three-step, five-step, seven-step, play-action pass, screen, move the launching spot on a bootleg. That time Shelby made a nice play containing Drew Brees. Here comes a cast of new players, Mike. Including Jimmy Graham, whose two catches were a touchdown. That on defense, when they do all their personnel, this is a good part of your practice week. All these personnel groupings, how do you sub to match them? And in the middle, it's caught again by Colston. And a hard hit to Chris Clemens, who's shaken up. Jamar Taylor, the rookie from Boise. Covering Marcus Colston is not even close. And Colston is physical after the catch. I hope Clemens is okay, but six foot four, 225 pound man working inside for several years with tremendous success. We saw that was a head to head collision as Colston put his head down. Clemens is coming from the side, so it's hard to talk about those three phases of lining somebody up, lowering your head, and using the crown of your helmet to make a hit which is a rule that they've added this year, but when you have the guy coming in from the side, it's impossible for Colston to be lining him up. And there you see the head-to-head -head contact that brought athletic trainer Kevin O'Neill out to bring Clemens back to the sideline to be evaluated. Jimmy Wilson out of Montana, seventh-round pick a couple of years ago, comes in. But we have not seen the Saints need to run it very often here tonight, but they've been extremely effective 
with Brees in the air attack. Loss of two for Kyrie Robinson. They're going to have to run the ball better than they have tonight. They've tried a lot of different runs. Zone blocking plays, draw plays. That time was an old-fashioned power play. and They put a lot of pressure on Drew Brees with the passing game. But you can't ask him to deliver much better than he has. 323 yards, four touchdowns, and no interceptions. Saints have scored the last 21 in this game. And on the floater, Thomas couldn't reel it in. Uncharacteristic up here, Thomas. He is the go-to screening back of the Saints. That time, Breeze looked off to his right. And Pierre is off to the races if he makes this catch. But look it in. That time, I think Pierre started running before he caught the football. Normally, a very reliable receiving back. You talk about great hands with Pierre Thomas. Uh, coming into tonight, he's handled the ball, runs or passes 954 times, and he's fumbled four. It's just incredibly reliable back. Play clock spinning down. And it runs out on Breeze. Offense number nine. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. I don't see that often. I'm sure Sean Payton and Drew Brees are going to have a conversation about that. Sean could have taken that from the sideline himself. But you become so reliant on Drew Brees to see things for himself. Something they'll get worked out. The person who's doing the communicating right to the helmet has up until the 15-second mark of the play clock to keep talking to his quarterback. And the pass caught by Colston. Comes up two yards shy of the first down. So as you saw Peyton after he made the call, could very well continue the conversation. When you throw a corner route, you have to have somebody chase off the deep coverage. That time Nick Toon out of Wisconsin, and he... Blurs the screen and clears out the deep zone so Colston can work in behind him and Garrett Hartley gets to show us what he can do tonight. 60 year kicker out of Oklahoma. He made the 40 yarder in the NFC Championship game and sent the Saints to the Super Bowl. And he made three big field goals 44, 46, and 47 yards in that Super Bowl win. That one's no good. He misses to the left, his second miss of the season. It's hardly no good from 43 yards. That's about the only thing that's gone wrong for the Saints here tonight. Peter's hopping on board. Battle of 3-0 and teams. And somebody looking to get to 4-0 and join the Patriots, the Broncos, the Chiefs, and the Seahawks, the only NFC team at 4-0. and And the Saints with a great opportunity to do that. And, John, that schedule for next week is very good. Some terrific games on Sunday. Patriots are at Cincinnati. The Broncos against the Cowboys. The Chiefs and the Titans as Tennessee tries to figure things out without Jake Locker. And that uh, Colts matchup with the Seahawks as well. Great slate on Sunday. That L pass underneath. Brian Hartline hung on. Takes it to the 45. Expect Tannehill to go up tempo, no huddle. Try to get a score to close out the third quarter. Got to be alert for screens and draws if you're New Orleans because the pass rush is giving Miami fits. I don't think County's sure of how Tanya wanted to check there. He got worked out, he got caught by Wallace on the sideline. Try the first down. There's he and Keenan, Keenan Lewis working against each other. Little hitch route by Mike Wallace. He's had one big game this year against Indianapolis and a big win on the road, but the other three games been awful quiet. Well, remember after that first game, he, he complained that he wanted to see the ball more, and then the second game against Indianapolis, after voicing that displeasure, he was targeted 12 times and had a better game with nine receptions. Second and three, and Clay's got it. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. John, it takes a while for receivers to get their roles 
in an offense, in a new system for Wallace and with the quarterback. You have Brandon Gibson coming as a slot receiver. Hartline, who you said before, had 1,000 yards a year ago. And Wallace has to take the top off the coverage, and sometimes that leaves passes for other guys. Yeah, Wallace played for Bruce Arians in Pittsburgh. Then he had to learn Todd Haley's offense. Now he's learning Mike Sherman's offense. Doesn't happen overnight. Tannehill's pass deflected up in front, and John Jenkins may have gotten a hand on that. That's the rookie out of Georgia. There's a lot of ways to be a factor, and one of them is just pushing the pocket and hitting the quarterback as he delivers the football. John Jerry, the right guard, isolated in one-on-one -on -one pass protection. Not many of these Dolphins up front have taken care of business in one-on-one -on -one pass protection situations. Marcus Thickpen had a 50-yard reception out of the backfield. He's back there again. Tannehill's going to take off, get the first down, and slide and protect the ball this time at the 25-yard line. Play man-to-man -man coverage. you got to contain these quarterbacks. You're vulnerable versus the scramble. Nice job that time by Tannehill taking care of himself and the football. You know, John, the, the game last night, Atlanta was down 20 and came roaring back. So that's why you keep playing, you keep going here. If you get a score and then make something happen, special teams, a turnover of some sort, you can get right back in the game. There's still plenty of time. Although your odds are really low. Dan Hill back shoulder and is caught by Gibson, who's inside the 10, first and goal, Miami. That's impressive by Tannehill. Shotgun play action passing and a back shoulder fade. Fake it to Daniel Thomas and throw it early outside where only the receiver can play the ball. That is a big time delivery by Tannehill. Gained 18 there and they'll try to knock it in in the fourth. Both touchdowns in that quarter scored by the Saints. We're up by 25. Saints not uh, doing it in the dark, but in the dome here. In the fourth quarter, New Orleans leads Miami 35-10. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Lisa Salters. Jay Rothman and Chip Dean, our producer and director, leading our great Monday Night Football crew. As we make our annual visit to New Orleans. Dolphins trying to get back on the board here in this second half. And Ryan Tannehill has play. He plays pushed out of bounds. Charles will take it inside the five. It's the same play. Drew Brees just threw the touchdown pass to Ben Watson on. Play action pass. They're trying to throw a post pattern. Not open. So Clay leaks out. But Tannehill off the fake. He wants to throw the post to Wallace. Nice work by Tannehill. Get to his secondary receiver. Goal to goal situation. Short yarded specialist Daniel Thomas. And it tailed back. But Tyler Clutch, the fullback, offset to his right, following him, and zero push. Well, there's just no pad level there that time by the offensive lineman of the Dolphins. Pad level wins. Low man wins. Reverse pivot by Tanny Hill. There's no movement whatsoever, and... Hey, I sit next to you and watch all the games on Sunday. This is common. Now, people can't line up and get a yard or two like they used to. Offensive lines don't have that push and that punch they used to. Yeah, four wide receivers. It's a check with me for Tannehill. He'll have run pass options. But this tells you a little bit about where Miami is running the football in key situations. Third and goal. And Tannehill lofting it to Clay, who's got it for the touchdown. Charles Clay. You can't throw the ball much better than Tannehill just threw that one. Corner route, tight coverage, perfect trajectory. And Tannehill was six for six on that drive. Watch the touch and the location of this throw. And Charles Clay continues to pick up the slack for the Miami Dolphins with Dustin Keller's injury. That's a nice route and an excellent throw. Good concentration, walking to chalk. 
point by Caleb Sturgis sneaks in. So Clay with a rushing touchdown from one yard out against the Colts earlier this year has his sixth career receiving touchdown. 35-17. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Verizon. Never be without football. Call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile from Verizon. Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live moss. ESPNShop.com, where you can get all of your official NFL sideline gear at Windows. It is uh, never too early to be thinking about Mardi Gras. Preparations underway with Mardi down here in New Orleans that happens in February. The uh, Saints have their hands team on here just a minute and 12 into the fourth quarter, but without Jimmy Graham, Marcus Colston, just in case the Dolphins try the onside kick, and Sproles have moved all the way up, so they just pooch it down there to Sproles, and you don't have your normal blockers out there, so Sproles does the prudent thing, just slides down and gives himself up at the 21. Remember 2011, it was week six of the season, and they were playing in Tampa, John, and Sean Payton, as Jimmy Graham was taken suddenly toward the sideline there, couldn't get out of the way, and ended up fracturing his tibia in week six, also tearing his MCL. He's uh, in the hospital for a bit, and spent a good part of the rest of the season coaching upstairs in the press box. Very difficult time for Sean, as uh, he had to try to get back to the head coaching duties while suffering a very serious and significant injury. And Sean has uh, come back, not just from that, but from the suspension in the sensational shape. That pass for Sproles is incomplete. Yeah, he's doing this CrossFit thing, Mike. When I went, worked out with him the other day, I had to quit. But he's doing this rowing machine. Then he's going to do these kettlebell raises. And if you keep watching this, he's going to do box jumps, power cleans. I was on my third bottle of water, but I got one of these kettleballs from him. There he is doing these box jumps. If you take these kettleballs, these are 40-pound kettleballs, and you got to use your legs, and you got to watch out, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I am looking at <laughs> That thing's $780,000 right there. Watch my screen, too. Gotta, here. It's a <laughs> heck of a workout that Peyton does. <laughs> Second and ten. They keep throwing here up 18, and Graham with the catch <laughs> to the 39-yard line. Sorry to interrupt your workout. It's hard to do it. It's hard to do a broadcast, I'll tell you. <laughs> Especially with these Saints receivers running everywhere. Jimmy Graham, great job on the inside release against LRB and another first down. Like to see the Saints run the football, and clearly they're going to go with Kyrie Robinson, the rookie from West Texas State, to try to close out Miami. But they need to run the ball better. They've run it only 13 times for 23 yards in this game. We'll try to establish more of that run with Robinson on the carry. We've got a nice block to take him for 10 yards and near a first down. That's what you love to see as a head coach. Let's beat the clock with a strong running game. Let's run behind Streif. Let's put an extra offensive lineman in. Bryce Harris to play tight end. And let's let Jed Collins, our fullback, get involved. Hand it to him again. You see 79 checking back into the game. Bryce Harris. The only enemy is the clock. And Drew Brees is going to milk it until the final second before he snaps his football. Harris stays in the game. Shy midfield. It's Robinson. Collins, the fullback. Blocking against Koa Misi and taking it another 10 yards and for the first down again. You know what I like right there by the young back? He stayed in bounds. This has been rehearsed time and time again, but the play is going to bounce outside to the left. A lot of backs would run out of bounds, avoid the hit, but you stay in bounds and make that clock tick. Good coaching. Good discipline by the young back, Robinson, who really has made some noise here as a ball carrier. It's very similar to what he did at the back end of the victory against Arizona in here a week ago. Four fourth quarter carries. There's another one. I'll take it to the 35 and still going to the 34. That John, you showed us uh, your workout and Sean Payton's little kettlebell workout 
it's interesting because he brought some of that. Look, he had a whole year on his hands as he was suspended. Couldn't have contact with uh, anyone from the team. So in addition to getting involved in his son's coaching and coaching his son's football team, he got himself in great shape, lost about 20 pounds. But he brought those CrossFit training techniques to his team. So the preseason conditioning was very different from what the Saints had done before and what other teams do. That CrossFit stuff was a huge part of it for these Saints. There's no question about it. Somewhere he saw Justin Smith of the 49ers squat 580 pounds during the season. And he said, we have got to get stronger as a football team. He did extensive research. And this cro CrossFit training is a part of their stretching too, Mike. They do some crazy things as a team stretching to get ready to play. Defense number 98. Five-yard penalty. Results in the first half. Yeah, against Jared Odrick, who had a good first half. And, John, you talk about the training methods and changing them and seeing the 49ers. It was right here because the Niners played Baltimore in the Super Bowl here. So when that happens, you use one of the team's facilities. So the Niners used the Saints facility, and Sean saw Justin Smith and the Niners said, well, we got to look more like that team. Yeah. New Orleans is one of the most impressive physical teams. And that started the concept of how to get ready for the season. Breeze has thrown four touchdowns tonight. Gets it to Jimmy Graham, and that goes to the 18-yard line. Those of you just joining us who watch the baseball, it has been another surgical effort by Drew Brees here tonight. Spider 2 Y banana. The line slides to the left. Watch the young back cut down the defensive end, but there's a beautiful banana. Doesn't it look like a banana, Mike? These Saints run all my favorite plays. I am really jealous. And that was the 10th straight game with 25 or more completions. So Breeze has tied two of his own NFL records in this game tonight. A ninth straight game throwing for 300 yards or more. And the 25-plus completions in 10 straight. Robinson runs for a couple of yards. If you haven't been with us, here is the Magistry of Breeze. We saw Manning work it last week. It was Breeze here to Darren Sproles' key spot. To make it 21-10 for that. Jimmy Graham up top for the touchdown. And Benjamin Watson is to start the third quarter, make it 28-10. And then a second dial up for Graham as the Saints score 21 in a row. And really the story in the first half, Miami played well against New Orleans, but two turnovers for their second-year quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, turned into Breeze touchdowns. Has made the margin comfortable most of the night. Hey, how about Jed Collins? Hit the fullback a little sugar. Hard hit at the 10 by Colomisi is Rashad Jones home. They have all these plays that start off looking the same that are different. And off every running play, there's a bootleg or a play action. It's very good ball handling by Breeze. He's going to come out under pressure by Trusnick, but he lays the ball gently to Collins. Setting up a third down and two. And he is just taking a look at that play clock, and he's going to wind it all the way down to two and take a timeout. New Orleans milking the clock, trying to get to 4-0. and oh. Oh, and The Patriots, the Broncos, the Chiefs, and the Seahawks for the perfect month to the start of the 2013 season. So with 8.04 to go, if you want to know what Breeze has accomplished, it's good to have a timeout to take inventory of what he's done tonight. We just mentioned the 25-plus completions in 10 straight games. Tied his own NFL record there and the nine straight 300-plus yard games. Also on Monday Night Football, it seems like every time we show up, he plays well. Nine 300-yard passing games. It's tied with Brett Favre for the most. They had a lot fewer games than Favre. And he's passed John Elway for fourth on the all-time com pass completion list. And passed Franz Harkington to move into sixth on the all-time passing list. So you can just take all that and just say he's really good. Well, he's a great quarterback. We saw it last week from Peyton Manning. And when you have a great quarterback in a great system for a long period of time and you surround him with great personnel, that's what you're seeing with Drew Brees and Peyton Manning. I can't tell you how impressed I am with Tom Brady, what he's done yeah. with a young supporting cast. But these CEO quarterbacks, they're going to be hard to be dealt with as the leaves continue to turn. Oh, 
That's very poetic, John. <laughs> I just, just thought of that. We just get some apple cider and kick back on the hammock here. Kettlebell. Third and two. <laughs> Thomas. He's going to get stopped. That's good pursuit. Jared Odrick has kept going all night here and will force New Orleans, I would assume, into a field goal attempt. That'd be a, a play that I would show tomorrow early in the meeting if I was Coach Philbin. You know, effort and ind individual determination are a big part of championship football. And you got to appreciate the effort of Odrick, that play right there. you got to finish all these games. Every week, every down, and Odrick definitely is a finisher. Sure, Hartley's glad to get back out there after the miss from 43. This is from 29. Moving left on the way, but it's inside the pipes. And the lead's back up to 21. Half a quarter to go. The balconies above Bourbon Street. Really no view like it in America. Having a party down there watching the Saints. As usual, so many fans in the town. When you're here all weekend, talk about their Saints. This uh, city and franchise connection has been stronger and stronger over the last half dozen years, to say the least. Marcus Thickpen with the return out to the 20-yard line. Ramon Humber makes the tackle. Well, almost everything they've looked at has been a pretty picture tonight. Breeze and Peyton. One of those special quarterback head coach combinations. As somebody likes to say, back and better than ever. First 20 years, they didn't finish over 500 here, but they finally hung a world championship banner in 2009, making one man very happy. Tom Benson, who's owned this team for the last uh, 28 years. The Navy veteran, his wife Gail, cancer survivor. Mr. Benson also purchased the NBA team here in town. They've renamed it the New Orleans Pelicans. They get their season started in a month as Gibson with the catch, and he's brought down by a host of Saints at the 28-yard line. As a matter of fact, where the Saints train, not too far from the airport, they've built an entire new facility right next door in the same parking lot for the NBA team, the Pelicans, who play next door at the New Orleans arena. So uh, it's under the same roof and the same management. And Mickey Loomis, the GM of the Saints, also has an oversight role with the Pelicans as well. They'll play the NBA All-Star Game here in New Orleans coming up this February. Daniels throw over the middle. That's an interception because it hit off of Bush and it's picked off by Chris Carr. Did not hit the ground and Carr, John, has the interception. Excuse me, Mike. Second time tonight, Mike Wallace has come across the middle. The first time, Tannehill missed them. The second time, they just don't look like they're on the same page. I don't know if Wallace stopped running, but this is quarterback receiver 101. When you run an inside breaking route, be crystal clear with your intentions. Are you going to stay on the move? Or are you going to sit down? Wallace and Tannehill need to have a conversation on the sidelines and, and make these corrections. It was clearly off the hands of Raphael Bush. Didn't hit the ground. Replay has confirmed the third turnover of the night for Jill Philbin's team. One Tannehill fumble and the two interceptions. The first one for Chris Carr since 2010. The Saints up 21 and back to work. Back to Kyrie Robinson. Now, John, we should mention here that Mark Ingram, the uh, Heisman winner in 2009, is inactive again, a toe injury. On Thursday, there was a question put to Ingram about a trade rumor that was out there. There was a story that he had asked for a trade. He denied that he asked for a trade. Ingram has not been as effective as some would hope. He led the team in rushing in 2011, 602 yards, but... Only 17 carries, 31 yards, a slow start this year. 1.8 yards per carry and 17 attempts. Over. Kyrie Robinson oh, no, making a claim for himself. Ready. 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 
another play in the backfield. And up front, and that's Marvin Austin. Remember, the Giants drafted Austin in the second round two years ago. They cut him in the preseason. And uh, this former North Carolina Tar Heel was just signed this week by the Dolphins, who put Vaughn Martin on injured reserve. So Marvin Austin, the new Dolphin, makes his first play. And his timeout is taken. A chance to be perfect through the first quarter of the season. And nine straight wins on Monday nights for the Saints. And we're on the way to that. John, you know, every once in a while I like to peek ahead at the schedule, see what's uh, ahead for us. December 2nd, we have the Saints going to Seattle. It could be some game out in the great Northwest. Long way between now and then. Here, Thomas on third and 15. Unbelievable. To the 22-yard line. And a gain of about 25. But there's a flag down during the run. Charlie Evans just made one of the great kickout blocks you'll see. The hole there back at that spot. And the flag is down. 26. They have been D. La Puente, but what a beautiful kickout block on a screen pass. Sort this out here. Holding. Offense number 80. 10 yard penalty. Deep third down. So it'll come back. Run a screen pass. You have to get a guard and a center out to lead the screen. Watch Pierre Thomas set up his blockers nicely and beautiful kick out block by Jari Evans and then the down the field hold by Graham. Let's take a look at Brent Grimes. I think there's a hold right there. I think it's a hold. <laughs> Jeez. We just hide it a little bit. <laughs> I would have said obviously holding number 80 offense. Third down and four. It's a down a distance that Drew Brees very successful at. Look for a sprint out to the right. You would have thrown it obviously if you were the ref. Yes. That'd be a good ad. That's <laughs> And there's the first down, Marcus Colston. He slides down to the 25. They gain 11. And more importantly, turn the clock inside of five minutes. Watch his hands, though, Mike. This ball's thrown low and away, and he just snatches the ball. Incredible hands that Marcus Colston has. Been reliable, been a go-to man. Unselfish, unsung hero here in New Orleans. One of the great anonymous receivers in pro football. Brees now over 400 yards. Looking up, looking at another one. Colston incomplete as the coverage is there with Clemens. Now the flag down. Best number 71. 10-yard penalty and third foot down. You know, John, you talk about uh, Colston. So this is his 106th game. He has 552 receptions with six tonight. 551 of them are from Breeze. He has one catch from one other quarterback. That was Mark Brunel when he was the backup here. Final game of the 09 season. One pass for three yards. So Breeze to Colson. Now 551 receptions. Closing in on 7,700 yards and 59 touchdowns. Those are the highest totals in each of those categories from one current NFL teammate to another. And that's a guy who was picked near the end of the draft. Four picks hey, Chuck, from the end. Hey, oh, they keep throwing here. First and 20, up 21. And Colston gets to the 26-yard line. You just watch the confidence that Breeze has in the big body Colston. You're going to see Colston enter from right to left. This is a tight window, and Breeze just shoots it in there. <laughs> you got to have tremendous confidence and a very, very courageous wide receiver to go into the land of Giants and make that catch. Got to hurry inside of seven seconds. 
they just keep throwing here. It's, it's like, it's just, are they losing 38-17 or winning 38-17? Timeout was taken. Breeze was not happy about it. Well, I think we saw back-to-back uh, -back two incredible shows by quarterbacks. Peyton Manning last week and Drew Brees here this Monday night. So here's the comparison so far. Manning with as uh, good a month as uh, a quarterback's had to start the season. 16 touchdowns, no interceptions. And Brees' number is impressive as well. And thank you for letting me draw on your... Uh, <laughs> you, know, you got this whole big screen that you can draw on back here now, so I'm just going to take that little one if you don't mind. It's been a pleasure watching these quarterbacks work the last couple of weeks. A lot of unsolved business, though, as we end the first quarter of the NFL. Four games in the books. Is this a time as a coach? Because now we're doing it as viewers, media members, fans of the league. You start saying, okay, now I know what, what's out there in the first quarter of the season. Who's good? Who's not good? As coaches, did you reassess it the same mindset? Absolutely, especially with the bye week looming. And Robinson runs it just shy of the 20 yard line. So, what do you walk away with on the Miami side? If you're the Dolphins and you came in here with a chance to measure yourself against one of the good teams in a very tough place to play, is. Timeout is taken here by the Dolphins. Well, defensively, Miami has injuries. They had no Cameron Wake today, and he's a game changer, okay? And Dimitri Patterson is starting corner. They lost Nolan Carroll. They have some injuries. Koa Misi's not Koa Misi. He's not healthy. Soli played a little bit, but he's not 100%. I think injuries had a lot to do with this tonight. The turnovers on offense, uncharacteristic of this year's Dolphins team, but they got to correct them. They must get Mike Wallace straightened out in this pass offense. They misfired a couple times tonight in the middle of the field. That can't happen. Wallace lined up on the line of scrimmage, covered the tight end. But Tannehill can play. He's a young quarterback, a work in progress. They're 3-1 and one at the end of the first quarter, and I like the state of the Dolphins. Just remember with Tannehill, this is his 20th NFL start. He had 20 starts at Texas A&M. At the time, he was a receiver his first two and a half years in College Station. Scroll, looking for another touchdown. Lost the ball as he got to the three. Was he down and was it out? It was knocked out by Jimmy Wilson. We also have a flag down. And the ruling on the field is Dolphin Ball. That's a rarity. You rarely see Darren Sproles fumble, and you also rarely see the Saints fumble. Let's take a look at the replay. Ball's in his left arm. That ball's out. Jimmy Wilson does a nice job stripping it. And we should point out that flag that was thrown. It's a beanbag that was thrown to indicate the fumble. So there is no flag on the play. So that is Sproles fumbling for the first time in his New Orleans Saint career. You mentioned, John, how reliable he is. Coming into tonight, 487 times he had handled the ball in those first 32 games. And the first time that he fumbled, you see his numbers with the Chargers, 13 times he fumbled. Another chance for Tannehill and the Dolphins, and Gibson takes it. Brandon tackled at the 12. This is a prevent defense by the New Orleans Saints. Just look at the depth of the underneath defenders. They're going to fan the field and try to keep the Dolphins inbounds and give them nothing over the top. Second and one, Tannehill avoids the hit, and Charles Clay continues his good night. Out of bounds at the 25 for a first down. Go back to your QB camp a couple of years ago. You know, this is the class of Andrew Luck and Robert Griffin III and Russell Wilson, and Tannehill was kind of overshadowed, certainly by the first two picks. What did you think of Tannehill coming out, and compare that to what you've seen in his first 20 starts? Well, we all knew he was a great athlete, but I was really impressed with his training. 
This kid was a starting wide receiver in a pro-style offense and also had the mastery of a lot of pro concepts having played for Mike Sherman at a &M. You see that big arm that he has and he hits Rashard Matthews, second year man out of Nevada for the first down. And we saw him with the run earlier. He ran a 26-yard run off a read option. And you think that a, a raw element like this can really become a special player because of his ability to do multiple things. No, he's a dual threat. He's got the ideal mental makeup I'm looking for. and He's a top worker. He's only going to get better. This will take us to the two-minute warning, and it's a middle shot for Dion Sims. Who caught the game-winning touchdown last week. He doesn't get that, and we get to the two. And the Saints close in on officially getting to 4-0. Up 21. All Saints Day is November 1st, but September 30th was an All Saints night, which we'll recap coming up on SportsCenter. GMC post game, Susie Calder, Steve Young, Trent Dilfer, Ray Lewis right here. Everybody back in the studio. We'll have everything else that happened in sports, including the baseball playoff game, the top 10 NFL plays in week four, and Miami fans as the Heat get set to start the defense of their back-to-back -back NBA titles. LeBron James and company talking today. You'll hear that coming up on Sports Center tonight. Sacked by Tyron Walker. His first as he gets Tannehill. It's impressive. This is a no-name nickel pass rush unit of the Saints. Tyron Walker, practice squad, made the team last year, undrafted out of Tulsa. You look out there, you see Glenn Foster once again from Illinois, undrafted. But these two men have given the Saints an inside pass rush. And we all know Gillette and Jordan can come from the outside, but this is just good work by Tyron Walker once again going up against John Jerry, the right guard. Cameron Jordan makes Tannehill step up, and I think that's four sacks for these Saints mm -hmm. tonight, and that's 18 sacks that the Dolphins have given up in four games. Way too many and something they'll have to clean up. Going forward, Miami gets Baltimore next week on Sunday, and then they have their off week. Call that with a home game against Buffalo. They're lopsided, three of the first four coming on the road. Tannehill's arm gets hit as he throws it, and it's intercepted. Will Herring, the special teams captain, gets the chance to get a pick. That time it's all Junior Gallette on a stunt. He comes right through the A-gap between the center and the guard, beats Richie Cock incognito on the switch, hits Tannehill right as he delivers the ball. It's time for Miami to head back to South Beach. Three interceptions, a fumble, that's four turnovers tonight. Not going to win against the New Orleans Saints on the road. Third career interception, John, for Herring, who was a Seahawk for four years. And Breeze and company will shut it down here with a 21-point win. And New Orleans goes to Chicago to play the Bears. And then we'll play the Patriots. So a couple back-to-back -back coming up before their off week. And it gets a little bit tougher. They'll get, uh, after the Bears game, a good taste of the rest of the AFC East. After the bye week, the Bills come down here. I like watching these quarterbacks. Even though they've done such a great job, they will not let the backups ever come in and play. <laughs> Luke McCown continues to rest. Over 400 for Drew Brees for the 10th time in his NFL career. 413 yards. There's nine incompletions, so only former Dolphin great Dan Marino has more 400-yard passing games than Brees. What a night. 
certainly after last year and uh, a year of really tumult for the Saints. Multiple head coaches. Something was missing. The presence of Sean Payton is back with this team. And this offense is rolling yet again. Drew goes to see Brent Grimes. They had some battles in the NFC South days with Atlanta. And a greeting for Ryan Tannehill as well. 4-0 and are the New Orleans Saints. Joining New England, Denver, Kansas City, and Seattle as the team's perfect through the first month of the NFL season. Sports Center is coming up next for recap of this game.